Hey guys, Gadget Girl Kylie here, and welcome back to my Let's Play walkthrough of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. And we are on the second part of the class trial, case number one. Huh? So it's continuing straight on from the end what of the, the last hell is episode. That supposed to mean? Why would she lie about something like that? I know you don't want to consider it, but look at this and tell me. Can you still deny the possibility? Nope. Hmm. That's weird. This is a new I piece of evidence. During my search. And I shaded in the top sheet with a pencil. And these are the words that appear. Oh man! I've totally seen people do that on detective shows. When you write, it can leave an imprint. Sketch over the next sheet of paper, and you can see the words. When I saw that, I was like, holy crap! I better make sure I rip the paper out before I use it from now on. It's a pretty old-fashioned technique, but even the classics can be surprisingly useful sometimes. Oh, and I should also mention, I found the notepad on the desk in Makoto's room. Ooh. Huh? So maybe she switched the names on the doors? Which means, Sayaka? only someone who had been in Makoto's room before the incident could have written it. Then either it was Makoto who lived there, or Sayaka, who switched rooms for a single night. So, Makoto, did you write this? No, I didn't, but... Of course you didn't, because the note also bears a perfectly legible signature. Sayaka's signature. Yep. Maybe she was intending to kill someone herself and uh, wanted to try and frame me, perhaps? And that's why she took the knife? But, but why? Why would she write that? The note was likely her way of getting in touch with a certain someone. She must have slid it under their door to let them know she wanted to meet with them in secret. If you got an invitation like that from the ultimate pop sensation, what young man could resist? Exactly, so it's got to be a male. Of course, I'm only into 2D, so it wouldn't have any effect on me. But can we be sure anyone even got this note? And honestly, even if they did, I do not think they are at all involved in what happened. Really? What makes huh? you say that? <laughs> exactly. <say> <laughs> Would you like to hear what I have to say? Very well then. Pay attention. Here we go, guys. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? Yep. But in the note, the place they were asked to come to it specifically says, my room. Yep. I see. So if someone read that note, then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was staying in. So in other words, even if someone did read the note and did what it said, they would not have any connection to what happened. No. It certainly would seem that way. Sayaka and Makoto switched rooms, correct? But no, the place specifically says my IP. So if then they would have gone to Sayaka's room. Exactly. The room that Makoto was sitting. There we go. No, it's wrong. The you remember? My and Sayaka's rooms got switched. Exactly. 
I missed it the first time. I tried to press it, but nah, I missed. Switched? That's right. The nameplates got switched, just like the rooms themselves. As a result, the nameplate on Sayaka's room actually had Makoto's name. And that explains and the, the door. On Makoto's room had Sayaka's. So what you're saying is, the room Sayaka was staying in was actually marked as her room. Then, if someone did do what the note said, they would end up at Makoto's room where Sayaka was. Plus, their rooms are right next to each other, so switching the nameplates would be no problem. And the one who switched the names was... Well, of course it wasn't you, right, Makoto? That'll be Sayaka. Right. Okay, then who did it? I got it! Me and Sayaka were the only ones who ever knew about us switching rooms. So the only other person besides me who would even know to switch the nameplates was Sayaka. You can also infer as much from her note. Yep, exactly. She's set this up. She specifically tells the reader to check the nameplate. She would only have written that if she knew the nameplates had been switched. Exactly. But why would she switch them in the first place? I think she was trying to set me up. She wanted someone to come to the room she was in, and also hide the fact that it was Makoto's room. What? Inviting someone to your room, but not telling them you'd switched rooms. Why would anyone do that? To understand that, we first need to understand what happened after she invited the person into the room. That's where the answer lies. What happened then was probably whoever she invited over came in and attacked her. Yep. We figured it out. We know who did it. Whoever she invited over is the culprit. But we still don't know who it is, you goddamn idiot. Sayaka fought with her killer there in the room, yes? Perhaps the answer to our previous question lies in that initial struggle. Yes, I think you're right. Then... We just have to figure out what happened during the fight, right? Yep. That reminds me. There was a replica sword at the murder scene. Was that perhaps used during the fight? It was indeed. Oh yeah. What's the deal with that sword? Sayaka suggested I should hold on to it. I thought it might come in handy if I had to defend myself. It seems pretty likely that the killer used it to break Sayaka's right wrist. How the hell could you possibly know that's what broke her wrist? Cause of the gold coming off. Oh, I'm supposed to go to a rest, aren't I? I got it. All you have to do is take a good look at her broken wrist, and it should become pretty clear. Right there where her wrist is all swollen, there's something glittery there. See? Is, is that gold? Indeed it is. It sure is. Specifically, the gold coating from the replica sword. You barely have to touch that stuff, and it'll stick right to you. And there's some on her wrist because... I got it! Because she got hit with the sword, right there on her wrist! 
Well done. I see, I see. And so the truth draws ever closer. All right, then it's about time to solve this mystery. Are you getting used to these non-stop debates? Starting with the next debate, I'll start loading multiple truth bullets into your truth cylinder. But just like with the weak spots, only one of those bullets can actually refute the proper statement. Oh my god. In other words, from here on out, you'll have to combine the right truth bullets with the right weak spots to refute each statement. If you come up with the wrong combination, you'll take damage to your influence gauge. You can press the L button to rotate the cylinder and choose which bullet to fire. Press and release the L button to cycle through each bullet. Or you can hold down the L button, then use the left stick to select a specific bullet. By the way, if the logic difficulty is set to kind, fewer bullets will be loaded into the cylinder. For our purposes this time, the logic difficulty will be set to mean. Well then, good luck. What? When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! And that's what broke Miss Maizono's wrist! So, she tried to fight back. She grabbed the kitchen knife she had hidden away. But then the culprit took that from her, too. And they killed her with it. And that's exactly what happened. When the fighting broke out, the culprit grabbed the sword, and that's when the first blow was dealt. A sword-based sneak attack! No, that's wrong! There we go. I like to hear the conversation first and then... Actually, no. I don't think the fight started with the sword. Why not? Because the sword sheath had been scratched. See? There's a gash in it. Like someone cut into it with something sharp. Yep. Something sharp? You mean like the kitchen knife? That was the only sharp thing found at the scene. Stop jumping ahead. Slow down and explain it so I get what the hell's going on. Aw, oh, too fast for you, Mondo. If the sword was used first, there wouldn't be any explanation for the scratch on the sheath. If you were going to attack with the sword, you'd take it out of the sheath first, right? So whoever had the sword was using That's it as defense. True. With the sheath on, it'd be heavy and bulky and useless as shit. Okay, so how did the sheath get damaged? If they got attacked with the kitchen knife, maybe they grabbed the sword as a defensive impulse. In that situation, there wouldn't be any time to actually unsheath the sword. So you're saying the sword was initially used to defend against an attack from the knife? Which means whoever had the kitchen knife was the one who attacked first. Yep. I think I get it. So here's how it all played out. The culprit came in, found the kitchen knife hidden there somewhere. Then they took the knife and attacked Sayaka before she knew what was happening. So she grabbed the sword to defend herself. But then the culprit took that from her too. Then, after they broke her wrist with the sword, they took the knife and finished it. Sorry, but I don't think Sayaka used the sword to defend herself. Yep, I think she lured. She was trying to be the killer. She had intentions to kill whoever she got to come to my room. And it all went awry and she ended up being murdered. What? That's what I think happened. How the hell can you not think that? Because she never held the sword at all. There's a certain part of her body that makes this clear. Shoot! 
got? Oh, her palms weren't covered in gold. There we go. You're talking about her palms, right? The palms of her hands were perfectly clean, so I don't think she ever picked up the sword. How can you know that just by looking at her palm? Like I said before, the gold coating on that sword comes right off. All you have to do is touch it. In fact, if you look, you'll notice that a lot of the gold has already come off the handle. It's safe to assume that's because whoever used the sword got some of it on their hands. Yep. There's really no way she could have picked it up and come away completely clean. Maybe she washed her hands after she escaped into the bathroom. Sorry, but I don't think so. Why would you Why think to wash your you hands in that, that situation? Is it because you think I'm ugly? What? That has no connection whatsoever. No, that's not it at all. I got it! According to the Monokuma file, Sayaka's time of death was around 1.30 a.m. In other words, at night time. And the water in the bathroom shuts off at night time, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Actually, I haven't taken a shower yet. Oh, we've been here a few days. Oh, my. You're no different. You smell like a big, fat, ugly donkey. Hmm? I'm not sure whether to take that as an insult or a compliment. Why would that be a compliment? An insult, obviously. So anyway, if Sayaka never touched the sword, then that means the killer is the only one who used the sword. But hold on. If that's right, then the one who damaged the sheath with the kitchen knife was... Sayaka. I got it! Sayaka? She had the kitchen knife? Yep. We already said that the attack started with... The person with the knife attacked first, and the sword was used as an impromptu defense. And the one who attacked first was... I knew it. Sayaka? I called it! Now do you understand? She wasn't a blameless victim in this. No, far from it. It's almost as if she'd been planning to commit a murder of her own. She took Shocked. the knife from the kitchen, then invited the culprit to the room she was staying in. And if it's true that she had the kitchen knife and attacked without provocation... Indeed. These are all the actions of an assailant. Which brings up another point. Nakuto. Sayaka was the one who suggested you two switch rooms, correct? Maybe the reason she wanted to switch rooms... Was to frame me. ...was so that she could pin the crime on you. That is a possibility, is it not? Sayaka wanted to... on me? Yep, you were pulled in by her feminine charms. That would also explain why she would switch the nameplates. She wanted to get whoever she had targeted to come to Makoto's room, where she was staying. And by committing the murder there, instead of her room, that would implicate Makoto. But for that to work, the target had to be lured out while still keeping the room swap a secret. If the target knew she had switched rooms, they would have become suspicious right away. So all that's why she switched the names? But doesn't that plan seem a little risky? For one thing, even if her plan worked, Mr. Naegi would just tell everyone they'd switched rooms. I don't know. I'm not sure our soft-hearted Makoto is capable of that kind of cutthroat behavior. Yep, she saw a mark and I'm sure she Sayaka took it. realized the same thing, which is why out of all of us, she asked him to switch rooms. Plus, she was the ultimate pop sensation. A totally forgettable kid. 
Or a national superstar? Who are you more likely to believe? Wait, Indeed. Then, you're saying she had this all planned out? Holy shit! But in the end, her plan backfired. She launched her attack with the knife, then found herself under attack in turn. That must be when her wrist got broken, and she was forced to drop the knife. Yep. The tables were suddenly turned on her, and she died at the hands of the one she'd planned to murder. Just hold on! That can't be true! Nope, it is. Because... Because... Hey! Hey! You guys have totally derailed the argument! You're being super boring right now! Come on, hurry up and decide who did it! I still Wouldn't haven't come to that conclusion yet. I had to punish you all just because you ran out of time. Oh yeah, we gotta decide who we think did it. Makoto, right now you just need to concentrate on figuring out the answer to this mystery. If we can't uncover who murdered Sayaka, it's over for all of us. It's not over yet. It's easy just to say, hey, decide who did it. But there just aren't any more clues, right? No, that's wrong. Dying message. There still might be one clue left. Sayaka's dying message. Dining? Wait, wh what did you say? The dying message. She wrote something on the wall behind her, remember? One, one, zero, three, seven. Written in her own blood. There must be a clue about the killer hidden in there. Yeah. Well, before we get too far into that, I need to ask, can we really be sure that Sayaka is the one who wrote it? I got it! Her left index finger had blood on it. But the killer could have just used her own finger, used Sayaka's finger to write it though. That could only be because she used that finger to write the message. I see. She broke her right wrist during the fight, so she'd have to use her left hand to write. Hmm. Yeah, but the killer could have easily sure. thought of I that. Sure, we can all agree Sayaka wrote it. But still... What the heck do those numbers mean? Come on, computer one, whiz. One, zero, three, seven? Reveal the answer now. Hey, Chihiro. You're a computer nerd or whatever, right? You should know all about numbers and shit. N no, that's not... Yes, I'm a programmer, oh, I but I don't to the wrong see person. any kind of meaning <laughs> in these numbers. I spoke to the wrong person. I thought the fat guy was the computer nerd. I should have looked at the profile cards. Oh well, it's going to come out now anyway. It's because they're not numbers. Oh, yeah, it looks like... Huh? What? What? No, it's just... Uh, look at the numbers, assuming they're not numbers. Don't these first two, one, one look less like two numbers and more like one letter? Ah, oh, you're right. The connecting line is barely there, so I assumed it was 1-1, one, one, but... Looking at it now, you could also read it as an N. Whoa, you might have finally just said something worth a shit. <laughs> Our little gray cells are really getting excited now. But even if that really is an N, 
N037 doesn't make any more sense than before. <gasps> I know who it is. If you flip it upside down, it's L E O N, Leon. Leon is the killer. Rotate the image 180 degrees. Yes, I was right. Oh my god. Now I see. She wrote down the killer's name. Huh? You just shot past the clue part and right onto who did it. So, whose name did she write? If you turn it 180 degrees. It's Leon, guys. Where is he? Here's my answer. The key to solving this mystery was simply to rotate the writing 180 degrees. If you turn the message around, it becomes the letters L E O N. L E O N. Or more accurately, Leon. Leon. What? Ha <laughs> ha. What the hell are you talking about? It, it's just a coincidence. It's just a bunch of random squiggles that happen to look like my name. No, it's not random at all. She wrote that message on the wall behind her as she was leaning up against it. In that position, she couldn't move to write normally, and had to write upside down, as it were. Yeah. And as a result, when you look at it standing in front of her, it ends up getting flipped. Try it for yourself if you want. Write something sitting like her, and the letters will be inverted. Th that sounds like one hell of a stretch to me. I'm the killer? You can't just go and say shit like that. I can and I have. If you're not the killer, then why did you try to destroy the evidence? Huh? You know what I'm talking about, right, Makoto? The evidence Leon tried to get rid of? Shirt piece? You mean the burnt shirt piece I found laying on the ground by the incinerator, right? As the killer stabbed Sayaka, they must have gotten some of her blood on them. And to dispose of the shirt covered in the victim's blood, they threw it into the incinerator. But one piece burned off and got left behind. And the killer didn't notice. If they had, they most certainly would have panicked. Isn't that right, Leon? Oh, uh, Leon, you are the killer. But is one scrap of fabric enough to conclude that Leon is guilty? Yeah, I mean, Leon's not the only one wearing a white button-up. That, that's right! There are plenty of other people here with shirts like mine. With just that one little charred piece, there's no way you can say for sure who it belongs to. You're right. That alone isn't enough, but there are some other points that may reveal the truth. Are you finally starting to understand? The answers to all the riddles are right here. Yeah, I think so. Where it was disposed of, I guess. 
Wan, maybe? Where then? Shoot. Oh my god, I've only got three hearts left. I got it. I should have picked how it how the shirt was disposed of. We should be able to figure out who the killer is. Oh, oh yeah, that's a good point. I, I think I know what you're gonna say. You can't reach the incinerator without opening the gate in front of the trash room, right? And obviously, you wouldn't be able to hit the switch to turn it on, either. You need the key to get in, and the one with the key was the person on cleaning duty. So the killer had to be whoever was in charge of taking care of the trash, right? <laughs> Interesting. Not necessarily. The key to the trash room. Whoever was on cleaning duty must have had it, right? So the only one who could get to the incinerator was the person in charge of the trash? And you'd have to get close to the incinerator in order to destroy... No, that's wrong! Through the crystal ball, maybe. Hold on. I think I know how someone could dispose of the evidence without using the trash room key. But if you can't get past the gate... You couldn't possibly turn on the incinerator, could you? Yes, you could. If you used this. What is it? Some kind of glass ball? It's busted to hell. Actually, it was supposed to be a crystal ball, but, uh... But how would you use it? Throw it, maybe, and turn on the button? Because he's a baseball the player, so he'd be good at the throwing. Incinerator switch and threw the ball through a gap in the gate. All they had to do was hit that switch, and the incinerator would come to life. Someone threw that through a gap in the gate. And Remember he's the pro baseball before, player. had the key so the only way the incinerator could have been turned on without his knowledge was because the killer was able to hit the switch without opening the gate once they got the incinerator going all they had to do was ball up the shirt and toss it in hey come on what the hell is this all you have to do is look at the scene to know that the killer never actually went inside the trash room. The shards of broken glass, the incinerator left running, the piece of shirt that escaped the fire. Exactly. If you're disposing of evidence, you wouldn't be sloppy if you could physically get into the trash room. If the killer had been on cleaning duty, the evidence would have been taken care of much more thoroughly. Wait, wait, no, just hold on. But the distance from the gate to the incinerator has to be at least 30 feet, right? The pinpoint accuracy you'd need to throw a glass ball that far and hit something that small. Could someone really do that? that that's right! There's no way! It'd be impossible! Difficult, absolutely. Impossible? I don't think so. Because the killer is... I got it! 
because the killer is the ultimate baseball star. Isn't that right, Leon? Do you, do you have any idea how stupid you sound right now? A target hmm. 30 feet away would surely be little challenge for the ultimate baseball star. You, you, you can't be serious. I, I, I'm not the killer. You are the killer, Leon. Everything's pointing These to you now. These shipper brains have got it all wrong. I'm telling you. You still won't admit it? Okay then. Makoto, go ahead and review the incident one more time to make his crime perfectly clear. And with that, we can end this. Listen to me! What the hell do you mean, end this? Say what you want, Leon. But all the questions have been answered. And the truth has been revealed. Yep. Now here's what happened. Yes, I would. Every case has one last element to bring the class trial to an end. This is the closing argument. In this phase, you'll give a complete summary of the case. You'll have to reproduce the flow of events for the case in the form of a comic book. What? However, you'll notice that in the comic there are a number of pieces missing. It's up to you to complete the comic using the provided truth panels. Also, if you take aim at a missing section and press the X button, holy cow, you'll get a hit that might lead to a breakthrough. Well then, good luck and have fun. I don't get it. Oh no, 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 no that one. What the hell? What am I supposed to do here? Oh. Well, that one's that long because she dropped it there, didn't she? I guess, uh, hang on, no, no, that one's, um, actually because I guess that one is there
Hmm. I'm a bit stuck here, guys. So, knock on the door, comes to the right door, says hello, she's waiting with the knife. No, she... She lunges at him, misses, he picks up the sword, blocks with the sword, hits her wrist, she drops the knife, runs to the bathroom, he thinks the door's locked, so he picks the lock on the door. He gets in the bathroom and stabs her, I guess. The killer is you! I think I'd better take one more look back at the case from the beginning. Okay guys, I think I'm going to stop this episode here and on the next episode we should wrap up this trial. It's ended up stretching across three episodes. So don't forget to like, comment, favourite and share the video. As always guys, thank you for watching and take it easy.